Welcome to the Today's Leader Podcast, a podcast for the leaders and entrepreneurs of today, building better leadership today to forge the path of success for tomorrow. Here's our host, Tony, Coach Pearl. Hey there, it's Coach Pearl here, and welcome to the Today's Leader Podcast. We are episode 282, and today is another one of our interviews with experts as part of our expert series. Now, last week was in episode 280. We saw our first interview of the year, uh, 2021, with Luis Gonzalez, who shared some really fascinating insights into fierce conversation and how he works with corporates and businesses and teams in using the concept of fierce conversations to help create great culture. Now, once again, during the week, I received some great feedback from people who thanked uh, me for having Lewis on the program, who, who were able to pinpoint two or three really great tips that Lewis provided that was having um, a bit of a benefit to their leadership roles already. So if you do appreciate the value of the podcast, and let's face it, we're 282 episodes deep, please subscribe and review. Um, pl please do a five-star review because they help us get found by others who need to hear some of the leadership tips from both myself and the, our expert guests. We've got a very loyal base of listeners and we really do appreciate you all. All, but really, we do appreciate it when you help us get our podcast out there. So please review, uh, subscribe, and um, and let's get the Today's Leader podcast uh, found by people that actually need it. So today we take on the concept of woohoo and how spirit, spiritual intelligence will take your leadership to the next level. Now, Amy Lynn Durham is the author of Create Magic at Work and the founder of the Create Magic at Work membership group. She uses her skills as a corporate mystic to bring so, uh, spiritual intelligence and emotional intelligence to energize and transform the workplace. Amy is a UC Berkeley certified executive coach and emotional intelligence practitioner who spent years in the corporate world successfully managing hundreds of employees for private and publicly traded companies. The insights that Amy brings around her time in the corporate world is absolutely fascinating. So just wait till you hear how someone who calls themselves the corporate mystic can also review back on their life and see themselves as just a little bit ruthless in the in the corporate game. Amy shares how spiritual intelligence is the next step up from emotional intelligence, how um, SQ is seen as the next level leadership, how SQ can work even with the most hardened cynics and the absolute benefit of being authentic and how to use spiritual intelligence to build stronger engagement within your team and your business. After a word from our sponsor, it's my absolute pleasure to bring you Amy Lynn Durham. The podcast is brought to you by Think and Grow Business, the home of the Think and Grow Business Mastermind. If you're serious about growing your business, get serious and join a mastermind group today. Find out more at thinkandgrowbusiness.com.au. And you're listening to the Today's Leader podcast, and it's my pleasure to welcome our very special guest. We've got author and corporate mystic, Amy Lynn Durham. Amy, welcome to the Today's Leader podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Amy, I'm intrigued by your story and the concept of the corporate mystic. So share with our listeners the 60-second version of Amy Lynn Durham. Well, corporate mystic, I was competitive and cutthroat in the workplace. That was my corporate side. And then I was the mystic at home, honing in on these uh, spiritual skill sets that really transformed my life. And I merged the two together and brought okay. my full self to any space that I'm in now. Wow. Okay. So what, so can I just dive into that? So you are like ruthless in the, in the workplace. <laughs> 
<laughs> I so, was. So what drove that behavior for you? What, what was that from? So if your inner self was uh, like spiritual and yet you were almost acting out of self, I, I'm guessing, um, what sort of drove that behavior for you, Amy? So when I, when I operated only as corporate Amy, yeah, I, I, when I was splitting myself, I think I was reacting to a system that I was in okay. and feeling like I needed to be competitive um, in a cutthroat way in the workplace. Yeah. As I continued to grow as a leader and as an adult, I realized that becoming more spiritually intelligent after emotional intelligence yeah. was a huge skill set that I could bring to my employees. And it actually helped us win. So it was like <laughs> healthy, positive competition, <laughs> which is, it was a win-win, which is, it was unbelievable to me. You won more when uh, you incorporated your authentic self than what you did when you were the, the ruthless sort of corporate uh, warrior, so to speak. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. The final year that I worked in my corporate executive job, I made it my mission to prove that collaboration wins over competition and that these connecting activities that sort of elevate your EQ and SQ actually improve profitability and productivity. So it was sort of my secret mission because I used <laughs> all the, the field tested activities and I put them in my book after I left my job. Yeah. But it was my goal to to leave number one because I really wanted to prove that these things worked and I yeah. wanted to leave on top before I pursued this new um, journey as an executive coach. And so you've written a book. It's called Create Magic at Work and Practical uh, Tools to Ignite Human Connection. So so I guess you had that, um, that 12 months trial run to really test that case study that you had that was um, able to really confirm to you that that was the, the right path to go. Was there a catalyst incident that created that shift for you or was it a, a gradual process that uh, compelled you to dive into it? So we'll get a little bit deep. Um, Joseph Campbell talks about the hero's journey, right? Yeah. And how you go through life and you go through dark times and it makes you better. And I don't if anybody's familiar, we'll get a little crazy on this show but if anyone's familiar with the tarot if you lay out the tarot it's a story of the hero's journey the fool takes off and goes through different challenges in life and then sort of comes out to the sun and the world at the end I definitely had some transformational moments in my life that you would maybe call the dark night of the soul <laughs> um, and that transformed the way that I wanted to behave Okay. And sort of improved my awareness of the interconnectedness of all of life and had me question what kind of imprint do I want to leave or what kind of ripple effect do I want to leave? Is it just about being number one and making the most money that I can? Yeah. Or is it about how my employees behave with their family and friends when they leave work? Okay. And what kind of energy am I sending out to that or example that I'm that I'm sending with them so the greater purpose and I'm, I'm sort of I like that concept of imprint um it really resonated with me I, I talk a lot about legacy and leadership legacy and I, um, I'm a John Maxwell coach so John talks about legacy so of course most of his coaches talk about legacy but but um that concept of imprint and understanding the role that a leader plays in the workplace and how that can define relationships for people that report to us, not just in the workplace, but their external relationships, where their family relationships, I, I think is a really, really important role that a leader very rarely sort of understands or accepts that, that's, that they play a part in that. So I'm really intrigued by spiritual intelligence and you were mentioning before the 21 skills. So, so work me through um, at your own pace, uh, say a broad-based concept of what spiritual intelligence is mm -hmm. and then um, how you use that to work with people or work with clients or work with businesses. So there's a few definitions out there on spiritual intelligence. The, the easy one that I like to use or the go-to is from Cindy Wigglesworth because she uh, developed the 21 skills that you can be assessed on for it. And it's maintaining inner and outer peace 
regardless of the situation. Yeah. That's the definition of spiritual intelligence. And it sounds simple. Like it's, it's short. Yeah. Maintaining inner and outer peace, regardless of the situation. Yeah. But that's a tall order for us. A to... huge order. It's a huge order. <laughs> Right. It's so like it's a daily practice. It's yeah. not it's not easy stuff, but it's rewarding work. Yeah. Uh, Dana Zohar is a philosopher and a physicist that talks a lot about spiritual intelligence in the workplace. And she defines it as putting your day to day concerns aside or your ego aside to yeah. operate from a big picture view. And then the, the 21 skills, it's faith neutral. You can be an atheist. You can be agnostic. You can still work on these skills. Excellent. Excellent. So um, often I find that the most simplest forms of of um, theory or practice or, or habits can often be the hardest. And I've always subscribed to that concept of um, simplicity actually requires a level of advancement for us to become simple in our lives because we need a greater understanding and, and a greater awareness so that we can practice concepts of simplicity so when you were talking and sharing your definition I'm thinking about the leaders that I work with and I'm thinking about that inner and outer peace and and I know that it's not prevalent in so many leaders and when you try and talk to them or, or you're coaching them through the emotional intelligence aspects of of their role and their things like self-awareness and self-regulation it, it's it can be really quite challenging for them to to identify that so that's when to me I, i'm thinking how difficult that is to align your inner and outer peace um at all times um I, I take my hat off to you for working so how do people respond when you start working within this place do they sort of do they do you sort of get <laughs> gee that sounds really simple and then they suddenly realize that it requires them to actually work at it to create that well it I laugh every time I share the definition because it, and I don't mean to laugh at it. It just is like, oh my gosh, that is such a tall order. <laughs> like I said before, like me. And to your point, we've probably been at a lot of workspaces, boardrooms, meetings where people may have looked peaceful on the outside, but yeah. then they have this whole inner turmoil going on on the inside. And that energy really ripples out anyway. Yeah. Um, so, so basically when you think about, there's some data out there that shows that whatever mood you're in as a leader or whatever energy, whatever type of energy you're, you're portraying to your employees, you can multiply that by 10. So if you're aggravated and upset as a leader, just think my employees are going to be aggr aggravated and upset 10 times more than me right now. Wow. How can I, like you said, self-regulate yeah. to make sure I'm coming from a calm and healing place or I'm making compassionate and wise decisions. Yeah. Um, you talked about EQ a little bit. You get to SQ by way of EQ. Okay. So if you're a highly developed leader that's sort of been in the EQ space and you get emotional intelligence, okay, I have some self-awareness of my feelings. I'm self-regulating. I have a strategy. I can create connection. That's amazing. Yeah. The top of that pyramid, I would say is SQ. And that's where you go next level where you're trying to operate from what I like to call your higher self. Yeah. As much yeah. as possible. Okay. And putting your ego aside or noticing when your ego is rearing up and recognizing if it's a value or not and then telling it to go take a nap. <laughs> and then my higher self is in charge and I'm going to work through this in that way. Wow. So I don't know if that answered your question, but. <laughs> but well, it does because, and and once again, really resonating with me. I, I um, came out of an organization myself that always talked about a leader's always on show. And one of the ways that I interpreted that was that every time I would walk into into my store and I, I led, uh, I'm from the retail game and I led large teams and 
Mm. I knew that if I walked in in a bad mood within 20 minutes, my team were either in a bad mood or they were in fear of me being in a bad mood. So, so I realised the consequence of that as a leader, that if I wanted my customers to be served in the best possible way, when I walked through that door, I had to be the leader that they deserved. They, I needed to be the leader that they needed on a day-to-day basis. And no matter what had happened to me or what sort of mood, I had to create that shift so that I was the leader um, that they uh, they aspired to, that they were inspired by and they were influenced by. So, And I'm now intrigued that I'm going to chase up some of that research that actually talks about that 10X sort of scenario because <laughs> I think that that's... Um, that's um, that's so true. That's what I've seen. So, and that's what I've felt. So, um, Amy, I'm also intrigued by something else that you speak about. So, this is, um, you know, the cultural piece. This is about team building, and mm-hmm. I think one of the topics that you like to talk about is the concept of the beer after work is not a team building <laughs> activity, right? Now, I'm not, that's going to disappoint so many leaders out there, I can tell you, because that's probably their sole aspect of team building in some cases. Let's go for a beer and let's see what happens. But um, but tell me, walk me through that a little bit. So what's the concept behind that sort of statement? Okay, so first of all, I love a good cocktail. I'm not <laughs> opposed to anything like that. But what what I'm just saying is if you're going to have a team build and beer after work or something like that, add something connecting to it. I just saw a report for here in America that 76 percent of American workers are reporting feeling burnt out. Yeah. Wow. And I'm sure, you know, that is not just in America. Yeah. So what we're finding, what it was in Harvard Business Review is people aren't necessarily burnt out because of their workload. They are burnt out because they feel lonely and isolated. Okay. So, and, and loneliness equates to about fi- smoking about 15 cigarettes a day as far as healthcare costs go. Wow. So adding to that, the beer after work, getting everyone together, or yeah. if it's, I think some people were doing Zoom happy hours. I don't know if they're that popular <laughs> anymore with COVID. Just all I'm saying is do something connecting with that activity. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would have my employees bring their favorite quote or a favorite pass- motivational passage yeah. that they loved. And we would get in a circle and we would have a cocktail, but we would share. We would read to each other okay. and we would share why that was important to us and it just brought that human element yeah. especially with coworkers that might not get along or might be like oh you know joey's getting on my nerves today he's why does he have to be so blah 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 maybe they hear joey share something emotional with his passage yeah. and they're like oh he's just like me just like me he's trying to avoid pain in life just like me he's you know wants to have a good life whatever that may be yeah, that's um, and once again, that's really a compelling way to look at it because I know that the beers after work are often um, some people will relish them and some people look forward to them, and then other people are just saying, "Oh my god, I've got to go, I've got to put up an appearance." So we we get this real disconnect through some people, and it, and for some it, it can be really awkward. So I like that concept mm. of aligning to it. I like that concept of having a connecting activity. So it's not just about let's go have a beer. It's about well, let's go have a drink, let's create an environment and let's have a chat. So, and I think Definitely. that the, the more that we can learn about people and the, especially the people we work with, the more we understand them, the better off we're going to be because we're building a greater depth of understanding and, and we can start to really start working together. So so I'm, I'm guessing that there would be a, a little bit of potential cynicism. So if you were to go work with the mm. leadership group, you would say, There would be one or two advocates, as we normally tend to find, and you've got a couple of people that sit on the fence and then you've got some cynics that are sitting here saying, just another new fad coming up. So um, (laughs) so, so walk me through how how you take like a group like that and, you know, Mm. what do they end up looking like? Do they, is there a shift? Is there a noticeable shift? Is there a shift in performance? A hundred percent. So all of these things increase productivity and profitability because, yeah. it, but it's a long-term measurement. It's not a one day you're going to see your numbers double. Yeah. It's a, oh, let me look at my employees and what their tenure is after two to three years. Oh my gosh, everybody's still here. 
because we yeah. have created a culture that is less ego induced, less stressed and less drama. And we have high values and we have people that want to work hard, but don't create drama and have less stress. Yeah. Um, I, I get the question a lot. Like, do you get pushback? Like with the corporate mystic stuff and the magic on your book and things like that. And I really, what I want to say first off is <laughs> I think that I attract, uh, the clients that are meant for me. Yeah. So that that's the first thing. And then the second thing is it's really interesting when you get in a room with some of the people that you described that might be the cynics, sometimes they're the ones that end up in tears sharing yeah, something yeah. super vulnerable uh, because they were the ones that needed it the most. And yeah. um, <clears throat> that's a pretty magic moment whenever that sort of happens, when you get that breakthrough. I always talk to people about, I love seeing the lights go on. You know, you can just see it in their eyes that all of a sudden there's that gleam of hope or that glitter of um glimmer of um what their potential is and that's just something that you just cannot buy in terms of satisfaction you just love seeing that happen with and so I can certainly understand those cynics are often the hardest I I had a client at one stage who who said to me and because I do a lot of leadership coaching where I'm taken into an organization and they say you're coaching this group of people so it's not like there's a selection process and um, and often I'll work with people who really don't want coaching, who are really quite happy where they are, whether um, whether they believe they're the best or not. And I had one guy who actually once at, at the end of the tenure, he said, Tony, I don't know how you did it, but every time I'd go into a session ready to tell you this was going to be my last one. And every time <laughs> at the end of each session, we committed to the next one and the pieces of action. And that was seriously one of the best moments that I, that, that, uh, I, I think back on and just think about how that person evolved over that 12 month period. So, um, so when we talk about say the leaders of today, what are some of the traits, Amy, that you would, expect to see in a leader that wants to do great things what are some of those characteristics and traits so i think a lot of leadership today is starting to get it with eq and emotional intelligence and the value of it i mean it's been talked about quite a bit the next step to set yourself apart is definitely exploring sq it's at the top of the pyramid if you look at sort of like a maslow's hierarchy type pyramid let's say say the bottom is pq physical intelligence the next layer is IQ, then there's EQ, and then there's SQ, and it follows the adult development theory. Okay. Your brain um, can start really having emotional intelligence around your, what, early to mid-20s, and then, and we're all human, so of course there's going to be exceptions to this, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then uh, in your early to mid thirties is when you can, you really start exploring higher purpose, life purpose. What are my values? Can I be a common healing presence? Can I make compassionate one wise decisions? Am I aware of the interconnectedness of life? That's next level leadership. Are you not just thinking about the data numbers from today, but the ripple effect that you're going to leave in the world when you leave this planet? So that concept of legacy comes really strong and and um, next level leaders, absolutely. So who's inspired you in your leadership journey along the way? Who's been the inspiration? I have to say Deepak Chopra really affected me with his seven spiritual laws of success. Okay. That was uh, really big. And then the, uh, the UC Berkeley Executive Coaching Institute was huge for me. Um, a lot of their teachings are on Dr. Angelis Arian. And we always live our values by the four uh, universal communication principles, which are we show up and we choose to be present. Yeah. And we pay attention to what has heart and meaning. And uh, we tell the truth without blame and judgment. And we're open to outcome, but we're not attached to it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, One of the things I love about doing this podcast, Amy, is I get to meet amazing people like yourself who who are sharing something new. Um, to me in a lot of cases so um, you know we've all got our inspiration we've all got the journeys we all have the stuff that resonates and and we build our our careers and our lives around that but and I mentioned to you off air, um, off air that 
I hadn't heard of spiritual intelligence before. And now I'm sort of sitting here thinking I need to dive into it. And, you know, the the unfortunate thing about doing a podcast like this is that I've ended up with a pile of books that, you know, are 10 or 12 deep at the moment that I'm just trying to slowly work my way through. So, and the funny book, the, the book, the funny thing at the moment is I'm actually working through conversational intelligence at the moment by Judith Glasser. Mm. And it's um, so all these new um, formats are, are just really exciting for me from a growth perspective. And I, and I know that um, I get a lot of feedback from our listeners saying, thanks for having this person on because they've inspired me. I've read the book and now I'm, I'm moving forward. So um, what about um, when we look at our journey as a leader, we've got our peaks and our troughs had and, you know, there are going to be times where we bang it up against the wall. There's going to be times where, heaven forbid, we're going to fail. How do you deal with that sort of impact when it's there for you? So I feel like you're talking about sustaining faith through difficult times. Yeah. Right? Right. <laughs> yeah. And again, that's a tall order. And so that requires SQ, maintaining inner and outer peace, regardless of the situation. Yeah. And, and then I think it ties into, I, I've heard you sort of work with this. You talked about self-regulation, but it, I'm really into the polyvagal theory, regulating your nervous system, staying, mm. working from a higher creative space, shutting your amygdala down, things like that. Yeah. I mean, the, the long, so the longer of it is let's talk about COVID. <clears throat> yeah. COVID affected a lot of leaders and you're like, okay, sustaining faith during difficult times. There's one of them. Yeah. How do you do it? How do you make compassionate and wise decisions for your teams during this time while still trying to be profitable? Yeah. Those are those are big calls to action. So there's a really cool article that just came out the other day from Thrive Global with Ariana Huffington. And I was like, yes. <laughs> she basically said it starts with inner work. Okay. Yeah. So as a highly developed leader, you have to take a look in the mirror and do all this inner work yourself. You have to maybe work through some EQ stuff. You have to work with maybe the 21 skills of SQ, which I'm happy to help you with. <laughs> and then once you do, once you do the inner work, yeah. then you can move forward and help your employees in that way. She, she referenced, we're paying highly developed leaders for their judgment, not their stamina. Okay. And that resonated resonated with me because I've worked myself to where I was very, very exhausted yeah. in the workplace. And I was a leader that made judgment calls for my people. Yeah. And you have to stop and think, yeah, they're paying me for my judgment. I need my PQ to be at top notch. I need rest. I need to get a really good sleep. I yeah. need to eat well. I need to be healthy so I can operate from that top level of the pyramid from my higher self. Yeah. And so I would just challenge everyone to think, am I getting paid for my stamina or my judgment? And like, if the answer is your judgment, <laughs> these skill sets are, are what would be the answer. It's a, it's a, it's a performance um, um, ratio. It's a performance uh, threshold um, very similar to that. I mean, and as a coach, we know that, you know, we've got to be present when we're with someone, otherwise we're not doing what we should be doing. And being present and um, working in that sort of space can be an incredibly tiring space. When we talk about readers and you've got a book out and mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping it's doing fantastic for you. I've got a, it up here on Amazon as we speak, Create Magic at Work. <laughs> um, but tell me, what are you currently reading? And then I, I guess what book had the biggest impact on you? So, okay, so current book is SQ21 because I'm super into it right now. So that's the book on the 21 <laughs> skills of spiritual intelligence. Yeah. But there's two that I always go to and reference and it's, they're both by Deepak Chopra because yeah. he wrote them for the workplace and it's the seven spiritual laws of success. And then how to create affluence, the A to Z universal laws of how to create affluence in your life. Yeah. And that one's really cool because I heard that he wrote it on an airplane, just like in one sitting. Wow. And, and the way that you read it is you're supposed to read it all at once and like ingest, you know, the book into your consciousness. Yeah. So you can like bring more abundance into your life. I'm into all that stuff. So it was really cool to me. Excellent. Yeah. Now, your um, 
you're driven by what it is that you do. How do you maintain your energy levels? Because I know that oh. a, lo- a lot of leaders don't necessarily understand this concept of their own self-maintenance. So is, is there a meditation process? Is there an exercise process? How do you maintain the, your, your pep, your energy? Personally, I'm big on meditating. Yeah. And I love guided meditations personally. I also work with the phases of the moon. So I do a lot of intention setting around the new moon because it's dark at that time. Yeah. And, and so I'll write, you know, what do I want to bring into my life this next month and, and have that quiet moment with myself. And then as the moon grows, I expect those goals to grow with action behind them. But I think the overall theme is we can all write our own prescription for what works for us. I'm starting to see it bubble up in, in the corporate space on LinkedIn and things like that, where people are saying rest is productive. Yeah. You shouldn't feel guilty for resting. Uh, there's a lot of signs coming out and some, a lot more understanding around that, which I'm happy to see. Yeah, it, it's um, there is a changing place. This um, corporate wellness is, is very much a broad-based scenario at the moment that people understand it, but it, but I guess there's, there's still a lot of leaders who really struggle with it. It's, it's very much like the work-from-home scenario. Some of my leaders love it because their teams are more productive and more effective and fundamentally more happy because they're not in the in the commute every day and then there's other leaders that are so distrusting of it uh, it, that it's quite challenging so um and and just to that i just want to add i felt like last year we kind of got inundated with like here's how you can take care of yourself during this crisis yeah with covid and it almost felt overwhelming and exhausting just getting hit with all of the like here's your here's what to do and so i offered you know hey why don't you look within? It's almost what a coach does, right? Yeah. We ask questions. We have people go internal to fill fill out what works for them. And um, yeah, a coach is great for that. <laughs> and as you know, <laughs> yeah, asking those questions, writing your own prescription yeah. is huge. So. It's um and and COVID was just such a a turmoil and still is a turmoil of you know, contradictions and um, uncertainty. And, you know, in one hand, you're telling, you know, I know here in Australia, in one hand, we had our government saying we're going into hibernation. On the other hand, we had businesses and and I know myself was talking to businesses about this is a good opportunity to reset, don't waste a crisis. Then you've got other people that are saying you've got to take care of yourself. And then you've got other people saying you've got to take care of others. And so we've got a lot of advice and a lot of it sort of flies in the face and contradicts the other bits of advice. So it was a, it still is an exhausting time for so many people. And so for them, for, for anyone to get some space to themselves and create some stillness around who it is that they are, um, is always going to be of benefit in this particular time, you know, um, I, I personally don't meditate, but I do a lot of soul searching and, and thinking when I, you know, out for a walk, I make sure I walk mm. at least every day, I, I jump in the pool and do some laps every single day. And I mean, that's my time to just drop everything and just think nothing more than just one foot in front of another while I'm running, for example. So, um, Amy, what's the vision for you going forward? What does that look like for you? So the overall vision is to bring heart and human connection into the workplace with Create Magic at Work, yeah. one person at a time. That's my overall company vision. That's my life purpose. That's why I left my job and started this company and this coaching practice was I have personally felt what it feels like to have a lid on your creativity yeah. and to feel burnt out in the workplace and i think it needs to change and it's the system that needs to change so the people people can thrive in a better system and and i can understand that concept where people you attract the right sorts of people because i know that mm-hmm. listening to this there'll be a group of people that have got their arms folded and saying ah oh, it's all woo and <laughs> you know and then you've got another group mm-hmm. of people that are just sitting there saying this is exactly what we need you know so so I can certainly understand that you're attracting the right sort of people. So so out of everything that you've accomplished over the last couple of years, what are you most proud of? Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's a big question. I, right away, I think I'm most proud of being able work. I'm, I'm getting there. But being able to bring my authentic self to any space, whatever room I'm in, yeah. I'm going to be acting the same way, uh, regardless of who's there. 
and what's going on. Excellent. Yeah, personal or professional. So Excellent. It's, it's life work, but yeah. And it's an internal recognition of, of your journey as opposed to selling a book and being on the New York Best Times uh, best selling authors <laughs> list. It's, it's, it's an internal outcome as opposed to an external success, which is um, something that's, uh, that's fantastic. I very rarely hear, to be honest, but anyway, that's great. <laughs> so, um, but, um, but it's, it's serious. I mean, a, a lot of people mm. don't get pr- proud of the journey that they've gone on, and a lot of people are on journeys, and they're always looking at other people to determine what success looks like when fundamentally if you've made a shift from, you know, that corporate ruthless warrior into someone who's a lot more authentic and working towards a higher uh, a higher space there, there is just uh, there's something to be incredibly proud of with that Amy so I can certainly understand that so um, is there anything that I haven't asked you that I should have asked you at this particular stage I was just thinking while you were saying that <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you were praising me and I appreciate that for like the journey I've been on and everything but I did want to I did want to share with with the SQ21 skills you know, one skill that I'm working on for 2021 I've chosen is to be a calm and healing presence oh. um, in any situation because I scored a little bit lower <laughs> in, that, in that skill level that I wanted to. And, you know, you talked about the corporate warrior and my old coworkers would laugh when they hear that because, you know, <laughs> I could get I could get pretty feisty. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to the people that you said are folding their arms and listening to, to, to you know, oh, no, this is woo woo. Well, these are these are deep skill sets that mm. you can take with you your whole life. Um, because I chose to work on being a common healing presence in 2021. Of course, the universe is rising up and giving me all kinds of <laughs> <laughs> challenges that I get to work through. Yeah. So that's been fun. But you know, thank you for the lesson is what you have to say. And sometimes I don't always say that. But other than that, that is the, what I wanted to share is, you know, to the to the naysayers. If you follow Create Magic at Work on LinkedIn, we post data nonstop. We post yeah. all kinds of data points to to show. And I have a quote in my book that talks about the the selectively data driven executive, where they choose to look at financials and everything that they're comfortable with, but yeah. they won't look at the data that backs up bringing heart and human connection into the workplace because they're not comfortable being yeah. vulnerable or looking at those things. So. I say, if you're a leader, you need to get comfortable with that or you're going to get left behind with innovation and creativity going yeah. forward. And just another reinforcement that soft skills are actually really difficult skills. So, so many people just, ah, that's a soft skill. Um, and for so many people, it's the hard, they're the hardest skills to really build connection with people. It's so easy just to divorce yourself and be an author, um, authoritarian sort of a leader, that directive style <clears throat> Whereas actually getting to know people and connecting with them and building rapport and being the leader they deserve is, is a lot more difficult and a lot more challenging. So, so Amy, how can people connect with you? You mentioned your LinkedIn um, um, page for Create Magic at Work. What else is there available where people can connect with you? So if you want to be a magic maker, <laughs> you got, all you have to do is go to createmagicatwork.net and everything's there. If you uh, want to explore the 21 skills of spiritual intelligence, I'm happy to walk you through it, give you the assessment, walk you through the debrief. And then we also have some products on createmagicatwork.net that are really great for the workplace. Excellent. Excellent. So um, I've learned so much during our conversation today, Amy. Thank you very much for for sharing your story and uh, spiritual intelligence Um, Yeah, thank you for your time. Thanks for investing in today's leaders. Thanks for having me. Hope we brought some magic to everyone today. (laughs) Join the group of people impacted by seriously simple stuff to get you unstuck. The first book by Tony Coach Curl. Available at Amazon, Tony's Simple Stuff provides the tool for people to master your life and aspirations. 20% 20% of every book sold supports Carter's cause. I get really privileged with the guests that I get on the Today's Leader podcast. I get uh, the opportunity to speak with great leadership experts from right around the world, great marketing people, great uh, business compo- uh, proponents from right around the world. And every time I speak 
with one of my guests. It just um, gives me something new. It gives me something new to dive into, to have a look at, um, and that ultimately helps the clients and the, uh, and the businesses that I work with. Hey, let's talk about the beer after work. This is a very Australian thing to do, isn't it? So Amy discussed it during the podcast, the beer after work. And one of the comments, um, a very, very clear, constructive advice was provided. So there's nothing wrong with having a beer after work. Just make sure it aligns with something. Make sure you've got a linking thing there. So... But I, I just want to take, uh, I suppose, just a slightly different slant, although very similar. How often have you maybe dreaded heading to the pub to have beers with the boss or your fellow workmates? Um, how often have you gone out and been in that situation and maybe the boss has had a couple of beers too many or someone else in the team has had a couple of beers too many? They get belligerent. They start passing around performance judgments. And overall making the evening just a tad awkward. Now, that's not what we would call team building. And as you can probably attest, I've probably been to one or two of those myself. So getting on the turps with your team without an overriding alignment champion a cause will never help you um, improve culture. Will never. Link it to something. So my little pit tips of advice, link it to something, as Amy suggested. Link it to an activity. Link it, align it with a, a, a connector. Limit it to a time frame. So, you know, less than an hour is often ideal. And never often offer free drinks um, because when you have a free-for-all, it's certainly not going to end up as a team-building exercise that you will remember um, until the, uh, the uh, until the issues and concerns that happen on the night start coming uh, being made public, and then of course you'll wish it never happened. So, team magic is an imperative for you as a leader. What can you do to drive magic at work and make your team a desired team to be on? And once again, just a huge thank you to Amy Lynn for investing in today's leader. And as noted and as in the show notes, you will see that Amy can be contacted on LinkedIn through her uh, company page, Create Magic at Work, and also uh, the link to her website at createmagicatwork.net. Real gratitude for that investment in the interview. Now is the time for you to take control of your leadership growth in this disruptive world in which we navigate. Our aim is to help you become the leader that you need to be. If you're looking to build better leadership skills, check out the Today's Leader website at todaysleader.com.au. Our website showcases the podcast and the magazine, and we're pleased to say our masterminds are now available from the homepage. Supported by our network sites, Today's Leader is a collective mindset for the leaders and entrepreneurs of today, forging the path of success for tomorrow. They have the mindset to make a difference and the ability to create an impact. Think and Grow Business hosts out Today's Leader masterminds. Think and Grow Business, where our focus is on personal, professional and business growth, Book your free 30-minute discovery call at thinkandgrowbusiness.com.au. The Coach Curl Academy has over 78 programs to help you build a better you. Join for just $1 for the first month. The Academy equips you, enhances your mindset, your leadership, and your business. Check it out at thecoachcurlacademy.com. Don't forget you are standing stronger, braver, and wiser. Don't forget the golden rule. Don't be an arsehole. I'll see you all again next week. Bye for now.